you want a proper roadmap on how to become a network engineer. And I totally get it. It's sort of a position that seems like, where do I even start, right? Do I go here? Do I go there? And I've created this roadmap for you guys that you can be easily downloaded if you want to. And I wanted to kind of create this for you guys that, you know, just don't know where to start, right? Or you, you are sort of in your steps of getting there, but you don't know if you're, you know, following the right things or you don't know if, if you know, if you're, if you're like on the right path or not. So I created this for you guys. Um, feel free to download it whenever you want. Um, but this applies for everybody. And I wanted to cover all bases. So whether you have a degree, whether you don't have a degree, whether you have, you, you're currently in school, whether you're not in school, whether, you know, you have experience or not, it doesn't matter. I've created this roadmap. It's a flow chart sort of way. So free, free to take a look at it. We're going to cover everything that, um, in this video and we'll go really in depth into it. So hopefully you guys can really, um, take use of this and, and find it very, um, informational, very useful for you guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. So welcome back everybody. Um, I've created this like sort of a flow chart for you guys, just so, um, you guys can see where to go from and it, and it applies to basically everybody. So it doesn't matter if you have a college degree, whether you don't have a college degree, whether you're in school, whether you're out of school, whether you have CCNA, whether you don't, I'm going to cover all bases for you guys. And hopefully this can sort of be your complete roadmap that you guys can just take a look at and see which path you want to take, because there's multiple paths of becoming a network engineer. It doesn't matter. You don't have to go to degree route. You don't, you could go to degree route. You know, it just depends on where you are. And this is sort of what I've created for you guys. So <clears throat> um, it's basically a flow chart, right? So um, everything in the orange diamonds are basically decisions. And then everything basically in the white, uh, the rectangles are basically um, just processes. So um, yeah, so let's just start off. And as you can see, guys, it's basically this whole process here. So um, let's just start off with, uh, with if you have a degree, okay? So Network Engineer Roadmap, you have a degree. You go to yes. Are you still in school? Yes or no? Um, let's just assume you're still in school and you are pursuing a degree. Um, what I recommend you guys do is potentially, and it, like, it really depends, but you should be majoring in these three main programs. And obviously your school may be different. Every school has a different like terminology when it comes to their undergraduate program uh, names and terminology. So like I said, it really just depends. But you should either go for CS, CIS, or IS. And to be honest, I would say CS is, CS is actually better than CIS. And I say this because it's more versatile. Um, it gives you more options. But then again, like I did CIS, which if you guys don't know, CIS is Computer Information Systems, as opposed to CS, which is Computer Science. Um, with Computer Science, you're a little bit more in depth. You're, it's more math heavy, a little bit of physics. It's, it's basically you're covering you know, data structure and algorithms. So it's a lot of programming work. But I believe that to be a better program because you learn more um, as opposed to CIS, which is more generic in a sense, because they don't cover that much in depth in terms of technology. And they may cover other aspects like business, management, things like that. Um, so I just prefer CS because it's more technical. That's just my opinion. And I also believe the industry prefers CS in general. So if you guys are picking between the two, go with, go with CS if you want. But I did CIS. It's completely fine. It doesn't matter. And I... It just depends on what you, whatever you want to do. So, <clears throat> so we got that covered. Um, you're going through one of these programs as well as IS is another one option as well. Um, but from there, you want to get internships. This is going to be the most important thing you guys need to do um, if you guys are still in school because internships, the value of university is actually not the education. The value comes from the internships, right? The internships are where all the money is going to be made for you guys because that's where you get experience. An industry wants experience, right? Experience, experience, experience. And having that internship is going to be so mission critical for you guys because that's going to kind of segue you into getting your first job, as crazy as that sounds. Because when you get that internship, you're building relationships with the team. Um, you're working on the team. You know, you're actually, you know, doing things that, uh, you know, let's say you get a networking internship. You're actually, at that point, you know, you're getting experience. And, you know, if you do well in the internship, which you guys should be doing and you guys, you know, should be working hard, going be as focused as you possibly can, making connections with people. Um, they're going to offer you a position. Like there's no reason why they wouldn't. And that's just the main value with internships. And I've seen so many people do this. They go to school, they don't get any internships. They graduate and they expect them to just, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get a job because I have a degree. It doesn't really work like that. Um, it, internships are the way to go. It's the absolute most important thing you can do. So this is more important than actually getting your CCNA if you want to become a network engineer. 
get a networking related internship as soon as you possibly can. Doesn't matter if you're a freshman, doesn't matter if you're a senior. Get it ASAP um, and get those reps and experience because it's going to be so important for you guys. Um, so the next step is going to be um, start studying for your CCNA. You don't have to like go too hard on it. It depends on where you are in your um, program. Um, if you guys are a freshman, um, you know, start studying for it, but don't like go crazy on it. Um, but you, if you're like a senior or junior, I would say go a little bit heavy on it and try to get it before you graduate. That's like the main goal with CCNA is you don't want to get it too early. Um, I mean, you get, I guess you can, but um, you kind of want to get experience before you ever even get certifications while you're in university. That's just my recommendation for you guys. Um, so focus on like studying the topics. And you, you, like I said, while you're doing your internship, you should also be studying at the same time. Um, cause you should always be learning, right? You should always be learning new stuff and it's going to be even easier to study for it because you actually have real world experience at that point. So next step is apply for internships that are networking related. Um, I, I've, I've kind of, these are very similar in a sense, but, um, if you're not able to, like I said, it, your internship that you get here does not have to be a networking internship, right? It just has to be it related. It could be help desk. It could be sys admin. It could be software. It doesn't really matter. Um, just get any internship, you know, because experience is key and you don't want to waste, you know, your times. And I recommend doing the internships in the summer, which, you know, and if you are looking for internships, you want to look for them towards like December. Cause that's when they start up like, uh, you know, looking for people for candidates or even before that sometimes. Um, so you should get your internship ASAP absolutely as soon as possible. So once that's covered at that point, um, maybe after your second internship, look for one that's more networking related. If, if you already have a networking internship, use that one. If not, um, look for another one. If you guys can't find a networking internship, look for ones that are either like data center related, look for ones that are in NOC related, look for ones that are even um, cloud related in a sense, if you could find something like that. Anywhere that's like operations, um, anything like that would be, would do um, for sure. So, um, and then at that point, do an excellent job in the internship. You have to give 110%. You have to go all out with these internships because you just want to show your value, right? And when you're new to the team, basically as an internship, you're it's almost like a like a six month um, interview, right? Especially with internships, it's like you don't have the position, but they're almost interviewing you and seeing if you can qualify the for the position later. Because ideally, the the life cycle is you get your internship, you you do the whole process, and then at that point, once you you know towards the end of the internship, they're gonna, they're gonna offer you a position if you did a good job. You know, you show your skills, you made connections with people. And if you, even if you don't, the, you've gained so much experience, the value is going to be immense, right? Um, so do an excellent job, you know, and if you guys, this is, this is the most important part right here. Do an excellent job of the internship, right? Always show up, always ask questions, um, you know, and you're, you're going to do well. Um, at that point, then get your CCNA. And at this point, you should be maybe your senior or junior year. Um, and at that point, you have your CCNA, you have your experience, you have your internship and you're kind of closing in on your degree at that point they're potentially going to hire you right it's it's almost a high you're in, all you're really doing is you're increasing your odds of them uh wanting to hire you right you did you you got your internship you're getting your degree you did an excellent job at the internship and you got your ccna like the the odds of them not hiring you is going to be very low so that's why i'd say go for at this point like you have to just you know grind it out and it's going to be a grind. It's absolutely going to be a grind, but it's going to be worth it. And then at that point, you're going to do a good job. They're going to hire you, right? It's, it's they they just are, right? Um, and at that point, you have the job. Congratulations. Um, and if you if they uh, don't end up hiring you, next thing you do is fix up your resume, make sure it's like you know up to date and everything like that. And I probably should have mentioned it here before. Um, when you're looking for your internships, you all should ha should also have a really good resume and everything. Um, obviously, your university can help you with that. Um, <clears throat> At that point, practice interview questions, apply for roles um, that are networking. At that point, you should land your job because you you have the experience at this point. So and your CCNA, so you being being able to find a networking job shouldn't be that difficult for you guys because you already have the CCNA and experience and your degree. Um, at that point, you should be all set and ready to go. You just have to fix up your resume, um, practice the interview questions, and then at that point, you know you should be ready to hire for roles and. You should be able to land that job. So that's the the sort of life cycle for someone who has a degree. Um, and let's now, let's just assume you don't have a degree, right? So you have no degree. Um, first thing I do is start studying for your CCNA. When I mean study, I just mean like 
start getting the materials, right? So I mean, get the books, get in the uh, the packet tracer, get in some of the boson exams, and just like what, getting like a video course um, tutorial or video course, uh, just a video course basically. Um, so basically get all those resources and start studying, right? And at that point, what I recommend you guys do is to get a very basic, any sort of IT related job. Doesn't doesn't matter, like at this point, you just wanna get any role. Sys admin, um, knock, anything, anything that's hiring that you can get a role for. I mentioned this, um, at the same time, like I said, fix up your resume and everything. Um, but once that's sort of taken care of, you're studying for your CCNA, you land in your help desk role, I would say stay here for a minimum six months because you're gonna be gaining IT experience, which is very important, right? Um, having tech experience versus having no tech experience is a big difference. And you getting this experience under your belt, as well as setting for CCNA is gonna be amazing for you guys. So at this point, you should be six months in, you should be you know, almost done with your CCNA studying. And with, at that point, what I recommend you guys do is start looking for networking roles that are very low level, right? Very, very low level at this point. Um, but in, but at the same time, I would say get your CCNA. And, and I probably should have put this before here. I would say get your CCNA before you start looking for these roles, in my honest opinion. So I'll probably have to fix that. But um, that's sort of the life cycle is you want to get your CCNA or you, or you want to get, uh, you want to start studying for your CCNA, get a basic low level. It doesn't really matter what the, just any role that's IT related, um, gain as much experience as you can. They're doing an excellent job. If there's network engineers there, try to network with them, talk to them, ask questions. That's, you know, very, very important. Um, at the same time, get your CCNA, right? Get your CCNA and then start looking for um, lower level networking roles, right? So that's, this should probably take no more than a year if you grind it out, right? And this is not network engineering roles. This is mainly just anything networking related that's not network engineering because it might be a little bit more difficult to do this without experience. So that should be taken care of. Um, at the same time, like I said, build up your resume, build up your LinkedIn, be more marketable to the industry. Uh, make sure your resume is ATS compliant. So making sure that you know you pay someone online to check your resume for you because that's very important. Because um, nowadays there's a lot of AI bots that review resumes, and if your resume is not you know up to standard, you're just not going to get hit up at all. Um, but at the same time, you should be making connections with people on LinkedIn. You should be posting content on LinkedIn. You should be doing things like that just to make yourself more marketable, more seen, so people know you. Um, messaging recruiters, um, you know, showing your project, showing your work, maybe creating a website, um, talking about your your project that you made on Packet Tracer or your actual physical lab that you created. That is crazy, crazy, crazy experience. That it's gonna be like it's gonna elevate you like crazy. So once that's sort of taken care of, um, you want to network with the other fellow engineers. This is so important. This is like the main thing. You want to find someone. You want to find a mentor, right? You want to find someone who can help you and guide you and tell you what to look for because having someone that's an engineer um, or network engineer or someone that you want to, you know, who you strive to, who's doing something that you want to do and having them on, you know, speed dial where you can just hit them up anytime is important because it's just going to give you the reassurance, right? And a lot of people struggle with reassurance. That's the main thing. They're thinking maybe what I'm doing is not the right thing and it's going to cause them to think maybe I'm, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I'm making, making, making the wrong path. And then what they'll do is they'll see someone who's doing cybersecurity and then they'll they'll jump ship from all everything they all the hard work they did here and go into cybersecurity, right? Or go into cloud or go into software or go into data analytics, right? And then this all this progress is gone, right? And the reason they don't have the the reason this happens is because they don't have the reassurance from other engine network engineers or other whatever whatever industry you want to get into, those people that can you can contact and you know you know, help you with your doubts, right? Because you're going to have doubts in this period. You're going to have doubts 100%. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be like, am I doing the right thing? Why are, why are companies not hiring me? What's going on? You're going to be asking those type of questions. I don't want you guys to worry about that. What I want you guys to do is just follow the process and trust the process as much as you can, right? Build connections with people, build up your resume, um, be more marketable to the industry, um, gain more experience in your current position, talk to people that work within the industry, um, within your company as well, and ask, you know, talk to phone network engineers, network with them, um, and things like that. It's so important for you guys. So um, at the same time, um, you want to build more projects. And like I said, you guys, you guys have to think outside of the box, right? Build some projects, um, post it on your website, talk about networking stuff, show that you have a very deep interest for this. And this is stuff you can put on your resume, guys. Like it's so crazy how much you guys are underselling yourself. 
Like the, you can do so much, even if you don't have experience, there's so much you can do to show that you're valuable to a company, right? So at this point, you know, you have your CCNA, you've built out your resume, you know, you've built out a lot of projects. Maybe you have a website, maybe your LinkedIn looking good. Um, at this point, and you have experience as well with your with these roles as, as well. At this point, um, if you didn't land a knock role um, or anything like that, I would say start looking for knock or even network engineering roles. And because at this point, this should this should be about a year and a half process, um, depending on how fast you learn and how fast you're grinding it out. Maybe shorter than that. Um, and that, that's what I recommend. Just go through this whole process. And this is for someone with no degree. Um, at that point, you start looking for roles, start practicing interviews. Your interview skills might not be up to par, but you got to keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. At this point, this may take six, seven months. I don't know how long it's going to take for you guys, but you got to keep applying, keep making connections with people, um, keep building out projects, keep updating your resume, keep uh, updating your website, post more content on LinkedIn, things like that. That's going to make yourself more marketable, more seen. And eventually... You know, you pass your interview and you land your job. That's the whole process for someone with no degree. Um, this process could take about two years, right? Um, or shorter. It just really depends on how fast you're willing to work, how hard you're willing to work. It really just depends, right? And how lucky you can get because sometimes luck is also involved, right? Um, things like that. So, uh, so that's someone with no degree. And now the last one sort of here is someone who has, um, I guess, a degree with no that's um still in school right someone who's still in school or someone who's not not in school but has tech experience okay so let's say you know you have your degree but you have tech experience so what i would do is um and it really just depends on what you want to do like if you're already a software engineer um it may be easier to break into networking because obviously you have that experience under your belt and you have your degree <clears throat> at the same time um so at this point the main thing you want to do is like just look for knock rolls, right? Look for knock rolls, and as well as getting your CCNA. Like I would just say, start because at this point you have experience, so you should understand some of the concepts of the CCNA. You should be able to pass it within four months, or even three months, right? And I've made a video about how to do it in three months, which is 100% possible. So I would say, focus on your CCNA, um, as and maybe look for networking roles or knock rolls as well. Um, but then, like I said, build troubleshooting networks, build more projects. Um, cause you, at this point you want to build, you want to gain more experience. You want to gain more technical experience within the industry. So I, I would say, you know, build more projects do do that. Basically it's all the same stuff, right? Build up your LinkedIn, fix up your resume, practice interview questions. Um, you know, ask people within the industry, um, if they're hiring, you know, things like that. There's so many methods, but this is sort of the whole kind of process that I created for you guys. It really just depends on where you are. So hopefully you guys, you know, you know, enjoy this and maybe this um, gives you guys a little bit more of, you know, a little bit of re reassurance on, you know, whether you're on the right path or not, or maybe you guys didn't have a roadmap. Maybe this is something you guys can follow. Let me know. Um, I just created for this for you guys, basically for someone who just wants to break into the industry and they just don't know where to start. Because when I, when I first started, I had no idea where to go and I kind of had to figure it out on my own, which kind of sucked. So this is something that I, that I credited that I wish I had back when I first started. And this is sort of the guideline and path that I would follow today. Um, like I said, it doesn't matter if you have the degree or not. Um, like, But d was it better to have a degree? Yes. Do you need a degree? No. So it just, you know, like I said, it, it really just depends. So um, this is the whole process. And like I said, it's really dependent on how hard you work and how lucky you get. And the, if you want to get lucky, you just have to work harder, right? It's just, it's just a numbers game at the end of the point. So... Um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to leave this whole sort of uh, flow chart in the description if you guys want to download it. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. And I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys liked the video, give it a like. If you guys want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys have a really good day. Peace.